Good evening and welcome to this online reception for Hanukkah. I am Alderman William Russell, the 692nd Lord Mayor of the City of London. I am very pleased to open this event, although sadly I am not able to be with you in person. First, I would like to wish you all a happy Hanukkah. Whatever your faith, I hope this online gathering will give you an opportunity for personal reflection and a chance to learn more about this festival, its background and the Jewish community of the City of London. A community whose history can be traced back to soon after the Norman Conquest and whose early legacy you can still see in some of the city's street names. After many years of banishment, the Jewish community was able to rebuild itself in London in the 17th century and has made this a better city ever since. Next, we will hear from Rabbi Shalom Morris of Beavis Marks Synagogue, here in the Square Mile. Rabbi Morris will be giving us an inside look into the synagogue, the oldest in continuous use in the United Kingdom, and also the only synagogue in Europe that has held regular services continuously for over 300 years. We will then be joined by Martin Goodman, Professor of Jewish History at Wolfson College, Oxford, who will speak on the history of Hanukkah. And finally, there will be a panel discussion chaired by Alderman Ian Luder with a number of distinguished guests. I wish you all a happy Hanukkah, and I hope this festival of light and freedom will inspire you at the end of this dark and difficult year as we look forward to better times ahead. Now, I would like to introduce Rabbi Morris. Happy Hanukkah and welcome to Bevis Mark Synagogue. My name is Rabbi Shalom Morris and it's my pleasure to welcome you here this evening. Bevis Marks is the oldest synagogue in the United Kingdom having been built in 1701 right here in the city of London. And so I'm so pleased that while we're celebrating Hanukkah this year at a distance, virtually, that at least in this way, we're able to gather together. This of course has been an incredibly difficult year for so many people. And that's been the same here at the synagogue, of course, having been closed. And in March and April, fortunately, many funerals uh, in the community. However, July and August, during those two months, we had six weddings, including my own. And now, as we reach the end of the year, we're having the first babies being born into the community in a generation. And so we've really seen the highs and lows. And it's why a place like Bevis Mark Synagogue is so important to so many, because while the world is changing around us, Bevis Mark Synagogue is stable and a place where people can always turn. In fact, Bevis Mark Synagogue, not only the oldest synagogue building in the, in the UK, it's the longest continuously operating synagogue in the world. And that, of course, means a great deal to so many people. And of course, this is due in great measure to the City of London. The City of London has been a place with diversity and welcoming to all peoples for so many centuries. The community first arrived in the 1600s where Jews were given the right to worship openly and then Jews were given individual civil rights. In the 1800s, before other places in the UK, here in the city of London, Jews had political rights. And throughout the centuries, Bevis Marx has contributed to the life of the city of London, while the city of London has protected the life of its Jewish inhabitants. Today begins a two-year refurbishment of the synagogue and construction of a visitor center supported by the National Lottery Heritage Fund so that visitors can come to the synagogue, learn about its history and its relationship to the city of London for many years to come. And so I have a special treat that I'd like to share with all of you this evening that relates to that wonderful relationship between Bevis Marks and the City of London. Beside me, we have these beautiful silver objects. And what these objects are were part of a gift that was given to the City of London, to the Lord Mayor, every year during the 18th century. It was a way for the synagogue to express the thanks for the freedoms that the community, the Jewish community, were able to enjoy here in the City of London. My apologies to the current Lord Mayor that we no longer give such items, um, but we have a few of them that have made their way back into the collection of the synagogue over the centuries. 
And this one that we have here is from 1728, and it depicts a scene of Judah in the desert. And what's amazing about this is that this picture that's on it has become the emblem of Bevis Mark Synagogue. And it depicts the protection that was provided around the tent, and I think very much reflected the sense of protection that the Jewish community felt here in the city of London. In just a moment, you're going to have the pleasure to hear from Professor Martin Goodman, who's going to share with you about the freedom of religion and its association with the festival of Hanukkah. And so what better way to mark the history of Bevis Mark Synagogue here in the city of London and its incredible continuity than by lighting this Hanukkiah, which has been lit at Bevis Marks since the 18th century. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the blessings in Hebrew and then light uh, the oil and wicks for the fifth night of Hanukkah. Baruch Ata Amonai Elokeinu Melech Olam Asher Kidishanu Bemitzvotav Etzivanu Lehadlik Ner Shel Hanukkah. Baruch Ata Amonai Elokeinu Melech HaOlam She'asa Nisim Lavoteinu Bayamim HaHem Ubaziman HaZeh Happy Hanukkah. A happy Hanukkah to everyone. And it's a pleasure to be talking about the history of Hanukkah. History matters to Jews. Many Jewish festivals are based on the celebration of divine intervention to save the Jewish people in desperate times. So that's true of Passover, which celebrates the exodus from Egypt, and of Purim, which is the story of the book of Esther. But not all these historical events are easy to verify in the historical record outside the Jewish tradition. Hanukkah is an exception. For over 2,000 years, Jews have celebrated thus their salvation from an attack on their religion by lighting candles, as we've just seen, in commemoration of events in Jerusalem in the middle of the second century BCE. Uh, the outline of what happened over 2,000 years ago is clear. The Greek king of Syria, Antiochus Epiphanes, attacked the temple in Jerusalem and instituted in place of the worship of the Jewish god, a new cult of the uh, Olympian god Zeus. Jews were required to worship Zeus and the other Greek gods and prohibited on pain of death to keep the Sabbath and circumcise their sons and keep the rest of their Jewish customs. And a Jewish uprising led by Judas Maccabee and his brothers led to mass disobedience, guerrilla warfare, and in due course, the rededication of the temple to the worship of God, Hanukkah. Uh, means dedication, and that's what we're celebrating with the candles. 
the reasons for Antiochus's persecution are much debated. And that's not because we lack evidence. On the contrary, we have, if anything, too much. We have two long narratives about these events written by Jews quite soon after the event themselves in the first and second books of Maccabees, which were written by Jews just after the Bible was completed and are preserved now in the Apocrypha in Greek by in the Christian Bibles. These Jewish writers didn't necessarily understand the motivation of persecutors. People who are being persecuted rarely do understand the full motivation of those who are persecuting them. Greek sources and Roman sources thought that all Antiochus was trying to do was to take Jews away from their superstitions and teach them civilized Greek customs. That's what the Roman historian Tacitus said uh, 150 years after these events. And recently discovered inscriptions in Israel suggest that the Jerusalem temple may have been caught up in a bureaucratic exercise by Antiochus's officials to check the accounts of temples within his kingdom. So we don't know exactly why Antiochus did what he did. But what is very clear is the effect of the revolt of the Maccabees on Judaism and indeed on world history. There were many other local temples in Syria and Palestine in the mid second century BCE. But none of these other religions apart from Judaism has survived down to the present day. And if Judaism had not survived, there would have been no Christianity and there would have been no Islam. So Hanukkah genuinely celebrates a victory for multiculturalism over 2000 years ago. I shall now hand over to Alderman Luder to discuss with the panel what it means to Jews today. Uh, good evening. Thank you very much, Professor Goodman, for that uh, fascinating insight. And it's now my pleasure to host the panel session of this Hanukkah celebration. I'm Ian Luder, and 12 years ago, I served as the ninth Jewish Lord Mayor of the city, following in a distinguished line stretching back to Sir David Salomon's in the mid 19th century. Our panelists this evening are Marie van der Zyl, Laura Marx, and Rabbi Jackie Tebbick. Marie van der Zyl is the president of the Board of Deputies of British Jews. A solicitor specializing in employment law, Marie is, like me, a member of the West London Synagogue, which is celebrating its 180th anniversary during COVID year. Laura Marks OBE is an interspace consultant and chair of the Holocaust Memorial Trust and the founder and chair of the charity Mitzvah Day, um, um, which operates in 30 countries, bringing people of different faiths together through social action. And Rabbi Jackie Tabrick became in 1975, the first woman in the UK to be ordained a rabbi. And having served a number of congregations in Greater London, is now the minister at the West Central Liberal Synagogue, a synagogue founded in 1928 by Lily Montague. Welcome to the three of you. And perhaps Marie, you could start with our first question. Why is it important today to celebrate Hanukkah and what does this festival mean for you? Oh, thank, thank you very much for your very kind uh, words of introduction. And it's a real honour and pleasure uh, to, to, be, uh, to be here uh, tonight. And as you said, I'm the uh, 48th uh, President of the Board of Deputies of British Jews. And for me on Hanukkah, it's a time when we remember the victory uh, of the Jewish Maccabees when they led the successful rebellion uh, against King Antiochus, who had outlawed uh, Judaism. And when the Maccabees uh, returned to the previously 
uh, defiled a holy temple to relight the ritual menorah. They only had enough oil to last one day and the miracle of Hanukkah was that it lasted for, for eight days. But what Hanukkah means to me personally at the moment is also to remember because we've had some quite dark times, shall we say recently during this uh, pandemic, is Hanukkah really is a celebration of bravery, resilience and the miracle of light. And that also represents um, hope and spirit, which we, we really need to find uh, in abundance at the moment. And I'm so proud of how the Jewish community has come together itself and with other uh, faith communities to try and uh, cope uh, with this terrible uh, pandemic and that we've had such a brave uh, spirit of volunteering uh, and togetherness, which really for me um, is a big chink of light. So amongst all these difficulties, this coming together, this really shows hope for the future. Thank you. Um, Laura, back to you. just to hit the unmute uh, and it's lovely to be here and uh, such a treat to be part of the City of London event and thank you for having me. So Hanukkah, Hanukkah takes me back to my childhood of course, it's donuts, it's dreidels, it's the menorah, it's going to my Auntie Jay's house for a party, it's presents, it's all of those things that, uh, that, that epitomize festivals and and, uh, and we didn't have to go to shul either, so uh, it had all the benefits. And uh, at Hanukkah, we have friends, we have connectedness. Um, and I think that the thing about Hanukkah, in the same as any other Jewish festival, is that it punctuates the year. You know, we, we know that it must be this time of year because it's Hanukkah. We know that Pesach comes in the spring. Uh, we know when the festivals are. And there's something very reassuring about knowing uh, when our festivals are and a reason to celebrate. And things that we have, like, you know, my grandma's menorah, all the three, the, the ritual that we have around the festivals is very important. Um, just one other thing I want to say, though, about Hanukkah particularly, is that Hanukkah faces outwards. Uh, there's a wonderful uh, piece by Lord Sachs, and at the moment I can't speak ever without mentioning uh, Lord Sachs, and, uh, who, who passed away so sadly so recently. And he said that the Shabbat candles are very much about home, and, and we do them inside with our family. The Hanukkah candles are for everyone, and we put them in our windows, and we say to the world, come and share the light and be part of it and be part of the warmth. And one of the things I love, therefore, about Hanukkah is that it's a festival that faces outwards and, and long may that last. Thank, thank you very much. And Rabbi Jackie. Hi, and again, I thank you for inviting me and I'm really honored to be part of this wonderful occasion here uh, this afternoon. And I too share these wonderful memories of Hanukkah as a child. And I love watching our grandchildren open their Hanukkah presents now. It's a, a great feeling of warmth and love. But this year in particular, I've been focusing on a very strange uh, article, the, the dreidel. Um, it's a spinning top for those who don't know it. And it was actually probably um, uh, derived from a game that used to be played in the pubs of medieval Europe, of Germany in particular. Um, and uh, you, you spin it and according to how it falls, you share or you have to give your, your, your wonderful uh, chocolate up or you take it all or else nothing happens. And it just reminds me so much this year of how everything has been topsy-turvy, how everything has changed continuously, never quite sure what's going to happen next. I mean, it's true of all years, of course, but this year seems to have been even worse. And yet um, there is a teaching from a Hasidic uh, master that says that the letters on the dreidel add up to the numerical value of the same word for the Messiah. Uh, in Judaism, we hope to bring about a better messianic future. 
So again, not only the candles bring this hope, but the playing of this little silly children's game on a different level brings the hope that if only we all work together and we all try uh, to help each other and to bring a better life into our society, then even through this darkness, we can bring the messianic days and bring peace and security and love for all the world. And that to me is the message very much this year. Thank you. Um, and Laura, leading on from that, could I ask you to start our second discussion, which is how the celebrations being observed this year uh, during COVID-19, of course, uh, with uh, London facing from tomorrow, uh, uh, a return to uh, tier three. Yes, I, I think there's going to be a lot of anxiety around tonight, even though we were sort of expecting it. I think it's still the reality of going up a tier is very anxiety provoking. And one of the things I think that we need to uh, be mindful of this year in our celebrations of Hanukkah is how many people are alone. And I went uh, this weekend to visit my mother-in-law in Oxford. Um, and we sort of have a very distant greeting. Um, but a lot of people are on their own this Hanukkah. And that's something that is not just a Jewish thing. There's people on their own. People are going to be on their own at Christmas. There's people on their own every day at the moment. And being very mindful of those, I think, is very much part of Hanukkah this year. Um, for us personally, I've sort of gone a bit to town. I've got an enormous, great blue tinsel mug and David, Star of David, in my window uh, that says Happy Hanukkah right across it, um, because I feel the need to really state my case and say to everybody, we're here, we're celebrating, there are good things in the badness that's going on at the moment. Um, a few things that really struck me was that we have this next door app you know, on your phone or on, on the computer. And there's people posting happy Hanukkah messages to all of our Jewish neighbors on it. And I think that this year people, you know, people have gone both ways. I'm not for a moment denying that there's a growth of the far right and intolerance and all sorts of awful things going on. But at the same time, we've got this growth of people recognizing the need to reach out to each other and to care for each other and to look after each other. And I think that we've seen that a great deal. Um, I also want to just talk about one other thing that we've been doing, which is I, I set up a charity called Nisan Hashim, which means women in Arabic and Hebrew. And we are putting out films every night with a Jewish and a Muslim woman in, on Zoom in their own homes, lighting the candles together, talking about the traditions and just being together and saying, you know, we're doing this and you're doing something similar and let's share it together. And tomorrow, building on from Professor Goodman's speech, um, we're doing an event on identity. Again, Jewish and Muslim together, because there's so many things we share, so many issues surrounding our identity as minority groups, as relative outsiders in Britain today. Um, and thinking about how we share those things and the positive sides about being slightly different and bringing something different to British society. So lots of wonderful ways to celebrate this year. Thank you. Uh, Rabbi Jackie. We're very conscious, of course, that in our community, we've got a very tiny community uh, and uh, the demography of our community um, is that we have a, a large group of very elderly people, uh, as well as a, a thriving and, and growing group of younger folk, thank goodness. Um, but we're very conscious that our older people in the community are very much alone. Uh, and one of our members, who's absolutely fantastic, has sent candles to them all and dreidels and has delivered where she can um, at a distance, uh, waving to people and leaving little presents of latkes on their doorstep or, or donuts. Um, in the uh, community um, itself, uh, we've been uh, taking advantage of the fact that we are online now. Um, everything we do is online. So we've been sending out recordings of Hanukkah songs in advance with transliteration so that people can learn them and use them for their own candle lighting. We've been having candle lighting most nights on Zoom at various events in the synagogue. And 
most wonderfully, Motzei Shabbat, after the Sabbath service on uh, Saturday, we had a play written by one of our members that explained what really happened to the oil in Jerusalem uh, from an ancient manuscript found on a rubbish trip in Jerusalem, written, of course, in Aramaic, because it just had to be that way. And uh, our young people put on the play of that story. And we had a fantastic time just being on Zoom together and being able to talk and have fun together. Um, so we're trying to lift the gloom in that way for our community. Uh, and of course, also uh, be engaged with other groups outside of our community. As uh, it has been said, you know, it is an outward facing festival uh, at this time of the year um, with lighting our candles for all to see. Thank you. And finally, Marie. Rabbi uh, Tabak has has put it so so beautifully, and just building on what uh, Laura had said, there has been a huge amount of loneliness in the community. It has been, like all communities, very very difficult times. And whilst we've been physically isolated, we've actually been, in many ways, even more connected. We've taken, if it's possible, the best uh, out of the uh, crisis to come together online. Uh, through technology to make sure that in the community we, we have events literally every single night so that people can feel wherever they are in the United Kingdom or even uh, around the world that we can all uh, come together uh, at this time. It has been very difficult for many people uh, in the community not to be able uh, to go uh, to the synagogue which really is a central uh, part of the community for so so many and we've had some major uh, Jewish festivals uh, during uh, coronavirus we've had the high holy days of Rosh Hashanah the new year and Yom Kippur the day of atonement and th this has been um, this has been uh, challenging and with Hanukkah here we are all I think in a positive I hope more positive frame of mind although it's going to be very very tough going into lockdown but we've all adapted uh, literally on Sunday I spoke at a Hanukkah event literally a drive-in um, Hanukkah event and you know we're all laughing because we've never had this before Chabad did a fantastic uh, event I'll give a shout out to Rabbi Dovi Shoket uh, and Robert and Jessica it really was uh, an, an amazing uh, event in uh, Mill Hill East. Loads of people turned up and we've learned to do things differently. And you know, we can all still have fun. We can see, we can see the light. And tomorrow we have um, a world uh, first because the Board of Deputies in partnership uh, with the Jewish News uh, is going to have an online Hanukkah lighting with the ambassadors uh, uh, to the UK from Israel, the UAE and Bahrain. Uh, with the Minister uh, of the Middle East of the Foreign Wealth and Commonwealth Office. And that is something that has never happened before. That's absolutely historic. So I find we are celebrating at Hanukkah this year with a new light. We're doing things we've never done before. So we need to keep that once we're through this very, very difficult period and take with us the positives that we, we can from this dark time. I think that tripartite uh, Hanukkah light, light, lighting is really very exciting and, as you say, uh, potentially uh, and hopefully a long-lasting legacy. Um, uh, we've probably merged our two uh, second and third discussions, but we can have a second round. Laura, is there anything you'd like to add to uh, uh, the discussions on the impact of the pandemic in particular? Well, just very briefly, I think that uh, the... the um, for Mitzvah Day this year, we focus very much on food poverty and loneliness. And whilst both of those were crises already in London, uh, COVID has no, no question made them much worse. And I think that this Hanukkah, if I have one wish or one um, wish for, 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 for London, for, for all of us together, is to really think about the people who are suffering big time this Hanukkah, um, people without food, people queuing up to feed their children, 
um, unheard of, and, and what a state in Britain today that we have that. Um, and people who are alone, um, dealing with their own thoughts, their own mental health issues. And if we can do something to bring some light and some love to the people who are suffering this Hanukkah, I would say, let's do it. And, and that will really make Hanukkah special this year. Thank you very much. Rabbi Jackie. Amen to what Laura said. Um, as a progressive Jew, um, we've been very uh, lucky in the fact that we have been able to use uh, Zoom and other methods of communication throughout this dark period to communicate with our congregants and with friends. So I've had services and uh, events, uh, classes, where I've had people who've signed in uh, from a boat on a, uh, just outside Saudi Arabia, uh, somebody in Bahrain, somebody in Houston, and somebody in New York, another person in Sweden, as well as Manchester, Northern Ireland, and London. Uh, it could never have happened before. And I just hope uh, that we remember um, that we, we, we love being with people. I want to hug people. I miss hugging people. I miss being able to go and see people who are unwell or who are bereaved and being able to have some physical contact with them. But we also have to remember that somehow through this, we have learned of other ways of communication and I hope we continue to use them. Thank you very much for the final a brief word from you, Marie. Thank you. Look, there has been, as um, Rabbi Jackie just, just said, um, bereavements. The, the communities lost at present uh, 579 uh, people. Every, every death is obviously tragic. And that's, that's probably about two and a half times what we would um, have expected, uh, given our number in the population. But we've, we've achieved uh, as a community um, a lot of other things for example when coronavirus um, first uh, struck uh, the government's initial coronavirus bill would have meant that people could have been uh, cremated against their wishes so the faith communities have come together we literally got an amendment to the law uh, over over the weekend there's been some unpleasant uh, sides uh, during this time we've had to face in the community there's been more anti-semitism uh, online uh, that's that's quite quite distressing but as Jackie um, and Laura have said and I have said the volunteering uh, element the way people have come together uh, the love that's been shown it's it's absolutely in that way um, beautiful that people have really given given of themselves to to help and that that makes me feel um, a sense of restored restored faith in, in people. We've seen the best of people in the worst of circumstances. Thank you very much indeed. Well, before I end our celebration, could I thank our three panellists and all those who participated, as well as the team at Guildhall, who both physically and remotely have worked to facilitate this evening. But above all, can I thank all of you who've watched this live stream, and I hope that next year, we shall all be able to celebrate together in the Great Hall at Guild Hall. And meanwhile, from the City of London, I wish everyone a happy Hanukkah and above all, a healthy 2021. Good night and goodbye.